The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Paul Dubov. The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. When it was over, his former life was over too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. And now we join Frank Race for The Adventure of the Fairway Beauties. Golf is a funny game. Usually, if a person applies himself diligently to a sport, he'll eventually come up as a creditable performer. But it's not that way in golf. A few people just have the knack. Millions don't. As for Mark Donovan... Four! Race, look out! He ranks with the great majority. Hey! Hey, Race! Oh, that was close. Missed me by a good inch. Oh, brother, it's a good thing you're a duck. Look... What did I do to that shot, anyway? You sculled it. Oh, I did. Well, look, I, I hit down on the ball, just like you said. Remember that term we used during the war, Mark? Too little and too late. That's the way you hit down on that shot. Do you know something? This is the most aggravating game which was ever invented. A little pill standing still, and a guy can't do nothing with it. You're doing quite a lot with it. Yeah, but never according to plan. Look, I, I'm, I'm going to try one more shot. If it don't come off, I'm heading for that blackjack game in the caddy pen. Let's try some strategy to get on this screen. What do you feel, like a hook or a slice? Eh, who knows? Well, you had a slice on the last one. So aim to the left. That should take it right into the pin. Right into the left. But there's a pond over there. If it goes straight... Mark, then... let's face it. You haven't hit a straight shot all afternoon. Chum, if we really face it, I ain't never hit a straight shot in my whole life. You've been slicing most of the time. So aim for that pond and watch it fade right onto the carpet. Uh... Okay, line it up for the pond, she cleared for the green, huh? This one will be a... <coughs> you see, what did I... Uh-oh. Oh, race, race, it's heading right for the pond. I'm sorry, Mark. I gave you poor advice. Look, the poorest advice you ever gave me is when you talked me into taking up this game. I'm through, I'm finished. I'm... <laughs> Relax, Marcus, it's all in fun. <laughs> this is what I'm having, fun? Look... You got four more holes to finish. Go ahead, play them, play them. I'll see you at the clubhouse. If I ain't there, take a peek in the caddy pen. But 45 minutes later, as I paid off the caddy on the 18th green, I saw I wasn't going to have to look very far to find Donovan. He had planted himself on the practice tee and was goggling at a couple of girls who were hitting shots. Since Mark has excellent taste when it comes to feminine allure, I wandered over there myself. Oh, oh, it's your race. Huh? What happened to the blackjack game? Uh, money ain't everything. Hey, look, take a gander at this pair, will you? Not only are they a duo of delightful dainties, but uh, watch how they lamb them balls. <laughs> you know, I gotta admit it, race. This California's a wonderful place. <laughs> look at that shot. Out oh, there a mile. They should be good. Know who they are? No, but I ain't turning down any invitations. The one with the deep tan is Zoe Frenier. She's National Women's Open and Amateur Champion. Has been for the last three years. British champion, too. Probably the greatest woman player of all time. I ain't gonna argue that one. Look, uh, how about the petite little item, huh? She is nothing but a double grade A pip. Barbara Stanford, California champion. Hey, you know these names? I know Zoe Frenier pretty well. I used to... Well, it looks like she remembers you. She's heading this way. Well, Frank Ray's... Or may I never hit another golf <laughs> shot? Which would be the tragedy of the decade. You're in wonderful form, oh, Zoe. Frank, it's wonderful seeing you again. Babs, come over here. What are you doing in California, Frank? We just came down from Vancouver, been loafing. Oh, Zoe, this is Mark Donovan. Hi, Mark. Hi. And this very lovely thing is Barbara Stanford. Maybe you know each other. Uh, not nearly as well as I think we should. Hello, Barbara. Hi, Don. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Everything is fun when it's with other men. Isn't it, Zoe? He stood off about eight or ten feet from us, 
Judging from the clothes he had on, he wasn't there to play golf. His features, set in a mask of bitterness, had bad news written all over them. Vic, I... I didn't know you were around. Well, that's nothing new, is it? You're not going to be a problem, are you, Vic? Oh, that's right. You don't like problems, do you? Just sweetness and light. That's our Zoe. Sweetness and light and fun with other men. Tell them to get lost, Zoe, all of them. You're out of line, Vic. Way out of line. I want to talk to you. Now, do I get to do it or do I turn myself into a really difficult problem? Look, chum, if the lady don't want to have nothing to do with you, she you don't want... You stay out of this, chum. With me, nosy bystanders draw nothing but welts. Is that right? Well, I no. think... A... No, don't. Come on, Vic, we'll go somewhere and talk. Wait a minute, Zoe. You don't have to let this lad push you around. And just what would you do about it? It's all right, Race, really. Nothing is all right and you'll know it. But stick around, Race, or whatever your name is. I've got a personal interest in your ill health. Hey. Who is that guy? Her husband. Her hu Oh, brother. And I'm trying to buy into a family brawl. <laughs> My lucky nothing come out of that. I didn't know Zoe was married. About three months ago, up at Del Monte. His name is Vic Mallard. He's a peculiar fellow. He certainly is. How about something tall and cool at the bar? I'd love it. On the practice tee at 30 yards, I'd been telling myself that this Stamforth lass would be something worth staying in California for. In the clubhouse tap room at two feet. She made me want to become a native son. What happened to your friend? Mark? Mm. His gambling instinct reared its head. I have an idea he's now in the vicinity of the local blackjack soiree. <laughs> he's a lot of fun. <laughs> what about me? Think I could be a lot of fun? With you, Race, the word fun didn't occur to me. No? What did? I... Oh, no, you <laughs> don't. I'm not going to give you a lead like that. I'll wait. I'm good at waiting. Are you, Race? Up to a point, of course. Let me get a rundown on you. You're here for the Tri-State Tournament. That's right. Then I suppose it's Seattle and the Women's National. And I don't suppose you're quite that patient. Rather play golf than eat? Love it more than anything else in the world. So far. That did it. I'll wait. I sit still for a prospect like that any time. Would you sit still for an interruption to this tate-a-tate? Uh, -tate? A lot of weight, a lot of muscle, a lot of tailoring in a double-breasted pinstripe suit. A look of bland friendliness went with it. The sort of look you get when you mention checking the bets in a high-stake poker game. He sat down without waiting for an answer to his question. I'm Chuck Kendall, Private Dick, working for Vic Malvin. So? I wanted to make sure he didn't hurt your feelings out there a while ago. This sounds like a new one. How does the dialogue go from here? What do you do for a living? Newspaper boy? Come again? What are you? A reporter? Why? Well, we wouldn't want Vic to get in bad with the press, that's all. And the guy's running for public office, a thing like what happened out there could look bad. It ain't really. Just the beef with his wife. Nothing to write about. So Vic is running for public office, is he? You know, that intrigues me. It thoroughly intrigues me. I don't follow you. You wouldn't. But you can forget the publicity angle. I'm not a newspaper man. Huh? In that. Do I sense a change in your attitude? You're a witty brand of cookie, ain't you? I can see why Vic had an impulse to change your face around. Got any more to say? Yeah, just one thing. Don't go bothering Vic. There's people who wouldn't like it. A lot of people. I know, Kendall. You're a tough boy, and you got a license to prove it. Now, would you mind leaving us? He does look hard, Race. I imagine he is. Quite hard. There's something else about Zoe. She's in love with Larry Myers. Do you know him? I know he's a great golfer. Zoe wants to get free of Vic Malvern and marry Larry. And Larry doesn't even know about Vic. That's why this is all so sticky. You see, Larry is meeting Zoe here for dinner. I'm telling you all this because Larry just came in. I think he's heading our way. A sweet swinger, a great competitor. Not more than a couple of years away from the National Open Crown. This was the tag the experts had pinned on Larry Myers. But his usual poise wasn't with him as he came up to us. Hi, Babs. Hello, Larry. This is Frank Grace. Oh, nice knowing you. Babs, I, I don't know what to think. I, I just got a message that Zoe is standing me up. What did she say? Well, she didn't say anything. She just left word with the bartender that she wouldn't be around this evening. 
Gosh, Larry, I don't know what to Telephone say. Telephone call I... for Mr. Frank Race. Pardon me. Coming back, Race? I certainly am, baby. Stay put. It was Zoe Frenier on the other end of the line, and the very tone of her voice said trouble. Race, can I see you this evening? It's very important. Melbourne? Yes, I, I've got to see you, Race. Larry Myers is here at the clubhouse. Would he be any help? No. No, I don't want Larry to know. I... Don't say anything to him, will you, Race? Promise me. I'm a clam. Where shall I see you? I'm staying at the Colonial Arms. It's on Wilshire near Westwood Village. I can't think of the number. It must be here somewhere. Take it gently, Zoe. I'll find the place. What time do you want me to come? I've got to go out for a while. Make it about... about 7.30. Is that all right, Race? That's all right. I'll see you about 7.30. At the Colonial Arms, I found Zoe Frenier's apartment on the second floor. But in the hall, just outside her door, I was intercepted by a pair of citizens who could have qualified as bouncers at a longshoreman's convention. Where do you think you're going? I can't see that it's any of your affair, but I'm paying a visit to a lady. In here? This seems to be it. Not just now, you're not. Take a walk. Been walking most of the day. I played golf this afternoon. Then you should be in good shape. Get going. All right. You've had your chance at being dramatic. Move aside. Look, friend. I told you once. What would you like? A special delivery letter? Obviously, we've reached an impasse. But I still intend to pay my respects to the lady. Nick. Yeah? Flip this pigeon down the stairs. Sure, Ogie. Nick moved his mask toward me, reaching out with thick arms. It was an open invitation for a wrist lock, so I obliged, twisted quickly, and flipped him. <laughs> then I had Augie to handle, a good man with his fists. I took one to the ear that sent me lurching for the stairs, but I got one back. And Augie went down, only for a second, though he wrenched up, came at me. I went to one knee and... <laughs> What's on here, anyway? It's this guy, Vic. He was... We was just doing like you said, then he gets tough. Where's Augie? <laughs> the bottom of the stairs. Looks as though the guy got very tough. Two of you mugs and you can't even handle one man. What are you here for, chum? This is getting repetitious. I came to see Zoe Frenier, and if you have any idea of trying to stop me... Oh, you can see her. I'll even go in with you myself. Come on in. Her apartment had been decorated to match the architecture of the building with an early American motif. I had a look around, noticed that the copper lamp hanging from the beamed ceiling had been badly dented by something. I tripped over a tear in the hooked rug as I moved deeper into the room. Fancy, hmm? Very nice. But where's Zoe? Oh, she's here. But she's not going to say anything to you. No? Why not? Because somebody just cut her throat. Return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. And now, back to the adventures of Frank Race. She lay sprawled on the kitchen floor, her head almost under the table, one of her legs still doubled grotesquely from her death agony. Zoe Frenier. Greatest woman golfer of all time. How do you like that? I don't. I've known Zoe for quite a while. This won't qualify as one of my merrier evenings. How do you think it makes me feel? I don't know. How does it make you feel? Come on out in the other room, Race. I've got to think straight and talk straight. I'm not going to be able to do either looking at her. Melbourne, the police, I don't suppose they've been notified... Well, if they have, somebody else did it besides me. I'll call them now. Put down that phone, Race. I can't stop you from getting lost, Melbourne, if you feel like it. I said put down that phone. <laughs> Try anything fancy, and the next slap will be with this pistol. Melbourne, you have firm and compelling ways. Just watch it, that's all. Any objection if I rub my jaw? You can get up. Sit on the divan if you like. I like that wax seems to have slowed down my metabolism a few points. You make good use of those shoulders, Malvern. A snake punch, you know it, I know it. 
I had to do it, that's all. You're an interesting case study, Vic. Where do we go from here? I'm that girl's husband. I've got a hunch you know that. I know it. It didn't take, but I've been carrying a torch for her. It's going to take a long time for that torch to die down even now. I got that too. And you think that maybe I killed her? I'm afraid a lot of people are going to think that. Yes, that's why we have to figure on you for help. You left me behind with that one. I checked up on your race. I checked up this afternoon just because I saw you with Zoe. I found out what you do. I found out that plenty of smart boys think you've got a lot on the ball. I still don't get what you're driving at. I want you to do something for me. I want you to go and talk to a certain man in this town. I'm asking you to promise to go and talk to him before you say anything to the police. And if I don't, what happens? Nothing. I get up and leave, and you're on your own. Who's the man? Will he be expecting me? He'll be expecting you. His name is Sylvester Painter. Sounds familiar. It should. He's mayor of the city. Sylvester Painter. I remembered a spread about him I'd seen in a national magazine. Resigned his office during the war to get into the service. Had been re-elected in 48. He greeted me with a look of intentness and a firm handshake. Sit down, Reyes. I uh, just finished talking to Vic. I may as well confess that I haven't the faintest idea as to what this is all about. It's about a lot of things. But mostly Vic Melbourne. How long have you been in town? Five or six days. Well, you probably know what we've been through then. Mess we've had with police department corruption? Yes. All right. Now I'm going to jump back to Vic. He used to be a cop. Great cop. Youngest captain of detectives in the history of the force. He served in the same theater of operations that I did during the war. <laughs> now, a lot of stuff has been said about what I did over there. Well, I started out as a major, ended up a lieutenant colonel. Vic began as a captain and ended up a full colonel. And did it with combat duty. And this is the man who carries around a couple of boys who don't mind roughing people up. Well, you see, Vic has been running for political office. And he's picked up a set of hangers-on who become a trifle overzealous at times. Uh, they didn't pull guns on you, did they? No. Come to think of it, they didn't. Well, this morning, I conferred with the police commission regarding our present emergency. I made the point that there was only one man equipped to become our new chief of police, Vic Malvern. And it's my belief that the commission is ready to appoint him. Quite a situation. Yes. But I'm sticking by Vic. When we talked over the phone just now, I asked him flatly if he was guilty of his wife's murder. He said he'd had nothing to do with it. I believe him. So where do I fit in? I want this murder cleared up and fast. I want a special man for the job. You. And don't think you'll just be working for Vic Malvern. Not at all. He phoned me twice tonight. The first time, he wanted me to give up on him. To forget about making him chief. I told him what I'm telling you. That if I can't turn to him, I don't know where I can turn. I don't have weeks to look around. It's got to be done quickly before real demoralization sets in. That's why I want a clean bill of health for Malvern. How about it? What could I say? But later, when I told Mark Donovan about the assignment, he shook his head. Oh, are you leading with your chin, Race? How do you know what's behind the deal? If it's political, it'll be stickier than a hot lollipop in a kid's hair. And besides, how are we going to get into golf with you on a case? Speaking of golf, reminds me of someone I could see. A lad by the name of Larry Myers. Right now? It's almost 10 o'clock. Probably a good time to get him. I'll catch you later, Mark. Yes? My name is Race. We met at the club, remember? Oh, yes, certainly. I'd like to talk to you a few minutes, Myers. Why, sure, sure. Come on in. Well, what's on your mind? Zoe Frenier. Zoe? I thought you might be interested in the fact that she's dead. Dead? Zoe dead? It rocked him, and I could sense that he wasn't acting. But he couldn't tell me much. He'd been too numb by the revelation. So I called it a day and went home. Right. 
Found out something about you tonight. You had better luck than I did. What? You are slipping. Well, that's always encouraging to hear. You had a date with a very pretty dame, and you forgot all about it. I had a... Yeah. Barbara Stanford. Indeed. I was going to join her at the townhouse. Did you think to tell... I give it a lowdown on the whole deal, give her a big pitch about the mayor himself calling you in on a big case. But she said I could drop dead. Would me do any explaining? Oh, Race, you ought to know better than that. She's still waiting for you. Marcus, you're indispensable. Dig me out a clean shirt, will you, and one of those new ties. <laughs> She had a smile for me, and it was in her eyes as well, so I felt irated. But almost at once, she asked me to take her somewhere else. I've been here so long, Race. I've seen so many smiles of sympathy. All from men, I bet. <laughs> Those weren't smiles of sympathy, baby. They were muted wolf calls. All right, we'll hit for another spot. Where'll it be? I'll leave it to you. While we were deciding, I was paged for a phone call. It turned out to be Mark Donovan at the other end. I've been trying to get through to you for the last 30 minutes. You're being shadowed. How do you know? Well, he caught up in the window when you left here. There was a guy staked out across the street. He tells you cab. What kind of car? Gray Chevy Coupe, one of them new ones. Oh, uh, there's something else. Larry Myers called. Wanted to know where you was. I told him about the date. Is that all right? Perfectly all right. Thanks, Mark. I seem to make you wait and wait, don't I? It's all right. This night here feels wonderful. Just look at that fountain across the street, Ray. Isn't it beautiful? Like to wave? Let's go. Perfect. Let's run. <laughs> hey, you're fast. You make me step. Oh, this is going to be marvelous. <laughs> off go my shoes. I think I'll take mine off, too. Hey, this grass is a little damp for sitting down. Race that car. It's acting oddly. Yes, it is. Race. Race, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Here, I'll help you out. Thank you. Yeah, I'm all right, but that brought my thoughts sharply back to business. If it's okay with you, I'd like to go somewhere else before we hit that nightclub. It's okay with me, but where? Zoe Frenier's apartment. I have an idea that we might find something there that could throw a little light on her murder. Will you be able to get in? How about the police? No trouble there. I was made a special officer by the mayor. Gosh. I had no idea Zoe had such a lovely place. What's the matter, Ace? Either someone has just left or they're still here. How can you tell? Cigarette smoke. Good. I'd have been disappointed if that hadn't been in this closet. What, Race? This golf club of Zoe's. You think it has something to do with her death? That lamp up there. Notice how it's dented? And take a look at that tear in the carpet. Someone was making practice swings. They evidently got out of the groove. It's my idea that someone waited here for Zoe. Waited to murder. And while they waited, they took practice swings with this club. It must have been a poor golfer to have hit that lamp. Or a good golfer who suddenly turned nervous on hearing Zoe at the door. Uh, I wouldn't handle the club, honey. Fingerprints. I want to be able to testify that this club wasn't touched after I found it. Whose fingerprints could they be, Race? Yours, honey. She didn't say anything, just stared at me from under those lovely lashes of hers. And I knew I'd hit it. Often a runner-up, but very seldom a winner. That's the way the records read when it came to the name of Barbara Stanforth. All because of a girl called Zoe Frenier. And Barbara hadn't been able to take it. Those, um, fingerprints, Race, could have put them on that club at any time. No, honey. When we came in, you tried to put across the idea that this was your first time here, remember? I'm sorry. Ten years apart for you girls, either way. And you could have been queen, couldn't you, Babs? It's tough. You would say it. I was afraid of that. But it won't make any difference, will it, chicken? Well... So it was Kendall you hired to gun me down. You knew that too, did you? Pretty hard to miss it. You'd never have noticed that car unless you'd been looking for it. My reflexes aren't bad, but you hit the ground before I did. Kendall, this is a very difficult man. Yeah, sure. Which makes the case worth a lot more dough. Write your own ticket. 
Just let me leave before you do anything. Yeah. Go ahead, chicken. So long, Race. I'm sorry, too. <gasps> Go on somewhere, lady? Kendall! Wait, you... <laughs> now, there was a pip of a punch. We were lucky. He was trying to shoot in two directions at once. Oh, don't get restless, lady. You gotta stick with us. I heard all that evidence, too, Race, but... Uh... You know, somehow I ain't happy about this. I'm not happy about it either, Mark. What's your reason? Well, when you come to think of it, uh, taking a babe like this one out of circulation, it's an awful waste of talent. The Adventures of Frank Ray, starring Paul Duvall with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, comes to you from Hollywood. Others heard in tonight's cast were Lillian Baev, Frank Lovejoy, Tom Holland, Michael Ann Barrett, and Bill Johnstone. This series is written and directed by Buckley Angel and Joel Murcott. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production. <laughs>